My name's Jim Hunsworth, and I'm going to talk about some pieces by John Robertson. We're going to start off with this piece here, which is uh, students are asked to make a, a commemorative statue, if you like, of, of a hero or, or, or a figure that impresses you. And John made this uh, figure of Robert the Bruce, which certainly in terms of what he's done afterwards is not the most successful sculpture here. But what I do, want to do point out to you is that just the way it's articulated in abstract terms, even though whatever you think of the figuration, you know, the way that flag <coughs> relates to the cloak, how it relates to the arms, and how that sword comes back and how it returns back into the body. You know, it's quite a cohesive sculpture in a sense, but the modeling's a little bit generalized. What I'm gonna move on to next is this piece here, which is a, you probably recognize it, it's a deconstructed and then reconstructed wooden chair, which is again, is a, is a set project within this course. But I, I sort of wanted to draw you to the sort of visual similarities that maybe the Robert the Bruce figurative sculpture had, just in, in the nature of how the planes are working together and how some of the uh, symbols are sort of referencing the figure in this one, otherwise known as corporality, i.e. to do with the body. That's what we sort of term things like that when we talk about sculpture. And just the fact that, yeah, the legs may be not exactly how your legs are, they're still referencing the chair, but he's also referencing the figure quite overtly as well. Uh, now the next uh, sculptures we'll look at it, you know, hopefully you can all see a sort of thread developing and you'll see that hopefully developed even more into, in these two pieces, which I, I feel again have got, have both got a, a corporal feel to them. You know, they've got sort of heads, limbs and protrusions like, like people have and they stand up and yeah, they have a presence in the world, which, you know, sculpture should have, really. Uh, the thing I want to really talk about is how they, sort of, they ended up being made. And I'm sure John won't mind me uh, telling you about this, but he wanted to make another statue of Fred Dibner because he, he was very interested in that industrial past that we've had and, uh, and the sort of mechanics of how things fit together. And I suppose between discussions between myself and John, we said, well, actually don't make a figurative statue. Try and make something that references, you know, industry and humans together. And why not? Because sculpture can have both things. And they also actually reference, you know, art that's been made. You know, some of it may be in the 60s or 70s by you know, various abstract sculptors, which John has researched and, and they're quite clearly in his learning. Like he's looked at these people. But what he has done, I feel, is he's managed to put you know, his own identity on those. He's used them, but he's actually taken them somewhere else and he's put his own interests on them. Now we come to the, uh, the end piece for this uh, course that John made. And it's a very ambitious, almost group triumvirate of, of forms, which again are referencing the figure. Uh, set up in, in, where they could relate to each other as architecture, buildings and things and ladders and levels or as humans uh, and they actually do that and they can, what I think is strong about this work is that it does switch scales because it actually operates on a an actual human scale which it, this is it's about seven feet high and I'm just sort of six feet so I relate to them in a, a real bodily sense but also in, in an imaginative sense where these things Almost, you can almost imagine lifts going up and down these things. And I think as a culmination piece to this level of work at level two, you know, it's a tremendously ambitious piece and successful as well.